Greetings, YouTube. Welcome to the IRS show. I'm your host, Billy Bown. Long time no see. These photos from the Spartan Red channel. <clears throat> so, long time, man. I had to move my my apartment into a house. We're in the new house, and I was setting it up all week. Um, so there's just a few images here that I, I took from his, uh, video today. You might want to check it out. He does about one a day. Anyway, so today's, uh, topic is a little bit, a little bit on the philosophy side, a little bit on the religion side. Um, certainly not a simple thing to try and describe and, um, perhaps teach some of you a few things about the Merkaba. And I came up with this idea today when I I looked up into the sky and I saw a supposed, a so-called plane. Look at this photo. Look at that building up there. Windows popping out on the left-hand side. Anyway, I looked up in the sky and I saw a Merkaba. And what I mean by that is the flying machine from heaven. And go with me on this, because I, I can't keep saying, you know, um, let's just pretend for a second and let's set aside our preconditioned ideas and our predictive programming, as in, it's predictive. It's so, the Ezekiel, the Ezekiel wheel. I might refer you to go back and, and read the Ezekiel book from, uh, from the Bible deals a lot with the firmament and uh, Ezekiel's uh, palace or tower. Here, this is the Jewish symbol of David, but really, if you are to represent this in um, real life, it would be a ten-sided tetrahedron, tetrahedron uh, which is this essentially the shape of the Merkaba, which is like a ship that will take you to heaven. That surrounds you everywhere you go, sort of thing. Um, you're in your own little world, as they say. <clears throat> and that's probably more true than we all know. Um, when we look up at the sky, it's but a reflection of a reflection. As in it's hitting, you're seeing the reflection of light hitting that thing and then the reflection of that light hitting the inside of your eye. And so it's double reversed. It's like taking a picture using your video uh, on your cell phone in selfie mode, and it's backwards when you when you play it. Anyway, you sometimes have to reverse your camera angle, your shot if it's uh, been done on the uh, selfie mode. Anyway. The Merkaba Rider, just a book I've came across, some interesting symbolage in the back. Um, what I'm alluding to here, and this is a glyph, all right, so you can read that for yourself. Essentially, it uh, can represent the letter A in so many different ways. And that's what I'm alluding to here, that this Merkaba is perhaps arriving from heaven or going there. On the left, you see the tree of life, and above that, you see the tetrahedron. Three fingers with no skin on the tips. I'm not sure about what that is, but you see the hand with the eye in the middle, eye of Horus. And, uh, you know, th there's a lot here. It's a tremendous amount. And look at the lightning striking the pyramids. Okay, and then that's the Egyptian dog. Sirius, perhaps. Uh, Sirius, the dog star. Um, you're going to see the dog star coming up again. So here I'm touching on the um, Fibonacci spiral, Fibonacci, and the sacred geometry of it all. The um, <clears throat> This is the uh, sacred ratio. So... <clears throat> Because of that, we see that this everywhere in architecture, painting, 
Um, it's just the most pleasing thing for the eye, for the eye to rest on. And so you notice how everything is exactly planned and exactly measured and there's no mistakes or accidents happening here in what we're looking at here in our architecture, paintings, art, etc. So 1.618. All right. Um, and I think when you hit this, when you hit it in photography, <clears throat> you just know it. You know it. You feel it. It's a, it's a game of the thirds. You see how the, first, the subject is one third over on the left and two thirds from the right. <clears throat> it's almost the third in photography, which was a big part of what I was trying to do as a photographer. Anyway, here's the building again from North Korea that we just covered last time with the golden ratio. And of course, the Taj Mahal. Even the pillars outside could and do represent things in terms of their spacing and their size juxtaposed to one another. And I believe this is Notre Dame employing the same sacred geometry. There's the Merkaba. It's the Merkaba. Okay. The work of the holy. The golden ratio. Here you're going to see a few logos. Perhaps you didn't even think about it. You probably didn't, unless you've seen this before. I'm sure if you're on the level with me watching this channel and you're and you stumbled across it, perhaps you know what I'm talking about. My audience is right up there with the smartest of the smart, and I'm no brown noser. I must admit, you keep me on my heel, keep me on my toes. But uh, YouTube, you know what, really set me back with my research. Look at this, okay. The pointer is also the golden ratio and the star pointer. So essentially they just, you, I think you might know what happened. I was censored twice. Now, here's the star pointer on the astrolabe. So, coming full circle, this astrolabe here represents seven layers, seven plates, <clears throat> including the pointing device on top, which has information on it. So seven layers, just like the seven layers of the firmament. Notice the equator is marked in a circle that's offset from the center. You see that? Now, there are two major circles going through astrolabe, you notice. One is at the bottom, and it's just etched out, and the other one's a major circle going the opposite, I believe. <clears throat> and I can't prove this, but I believe there are two suns, or there at least was, and that's the path of both suns. One is offset. As, one, as the sun sets across the ocean, it does what it will, but the other one takes over from where the first one started. They're identical. You'll never see them in the same sky. This okay, so these are the plates two, three, six, seven, plus the underplate, which has information on it. Sure. Now this thing is meant to represent what's in the sky, what's around us, numerology as in the numbers of the of the days and the months. But you always notice there's two two measurements and this is a representation of what we would see on the ground from above this would be God's viewpoint okay the eagle eye from above okay so it just so happens you're riding with eagle nose used to be in the eagle eye crew shout out to Jerry and all those guys I don't watch their videos anymore but I'm still with Spartan Red anyway he's made his point no need to beat a dead horse the limb in the womb, no matter. Now you see two circulars on the right there. The horse, the reed, okay? There are two spirals where one sun would take over from the other. There's the horizon, and just like the greatest tool ever created, mimics what you see on the ground as above, below. Now I'm saying, this tool isn't used anymore, perhaps, perhaps because Earth isn't as it was when this tool was made. Perhaps this is really going back into ancient technology 
when there was two suns, okay, go with me on this. Perhaps it's measuring both suns. You see how the equator is off of the other equator. There's two equators. Okay. I'm saying two equators on the astrolabe. Here's more pictures of the firmament represented by seven layers. Same as the astrolabe. Essentially, you could take in all ignorance seven layers from the astrolabe and overlay them and they would represent seven layers of the firmament you notice the pillars of the earth underneath there that's what i'm trying to look that's what i'm trying to look at there now this columns of the earth perhaps is made of brick perhaps so there's a, those are the buildings those are the buildings that melted on top but they go down 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 deep and into the abyss and there's only one way of finding of seeing that they say the only way of seeing the pillars of the earth is to die the floodgates could be opened as well but I think what we're looking at is the inundation of earth with fire so yeah because I was uh, censored I kind of took the wings took the wind out of my sails I must admit I didn't feel like doing a video for weeks and weeks. I think I mentioned my health was suffering. I stopped smoking. I quit, however you want to say it. I still haven't. I had one last night, to be honest with you, but that's because I was rolling it with hashish. <sighs> the greatest stuff ever made. But just the tip, I had a little bit of tobacco. Here, if you stop, take a picture of this. You'll see, and you can refer back and forth. The water's above, too. You can read for yourself. Okay, so if this were true, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly when this depiction was made, but it could be the old world. Layer six, this is uh, one representation of it. Um, the invisible pillars, you notice that on the right, holding up the firmament. Yeah, crazy to think. No. Three worlds, the regeneration, regentrification, Jacob's Ladder on the left, the old world, with Mount Meru in the middle. Everyone gather around. In the middle of those three circles at a renovation by fire. Okay, Peter 2, 3.7-13, the new earth. So there's, oh, ah, Mount Meru on the top, the perfect age. We must be in the middle at the end of the middle. The Omega, ages of the, yeah. So I know this is a really deep video. If I don't have enough time to obviously go into, uh, you know, all these things. I'm no expert. I'm a learned student. Uh, but I have been studying this for a few years now. The New Jerusalem way up top. My daughter said she had a dream that she saw she went to heaven and heaven was a giant green palace <laughs> green no less uh, so the Jews became the head of the nations I didn't quite catch all that now I'm not Jewish myself okay um, I take all the religions sort of with a grain of salt and also but also with a grain of uh, respect because these are the really seriously old, the judgment of nations, yeah. It's seriously old depictions and information. Okay, and actually underneath this is the land of Israel. If you notice, you see Tel Aviv and um, Jerusalem and everything right in the center. There's the old photo waving outside the firmament. All right. So that's what I was trying to draw your attention to. The Merkaba, perhaps. Those chemtrails you see in the sky. Those are angels coming down from heaven. <laughs> that's what they would say in the old age. In the ancient age. And so, yeah, they're probably partway invisible. And they could be leaving a trail behind. They're certainly not uh, planes, although they do leave a mark in the sky. So, 
with that being said, I think that's the end of my video this time. I do want to go on and on and talk about this a little bit more, but uh, it sort of seems like uh, I should save some for the next time. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm feeling much better. Thank you for your ongoing support on this channel. We're still moving, actually. We, uh, we have a month layover, so I was over there earlier today. I've had exhaustion because of the move and dealing with health with a health crisis so pretty sure I'm out of the woods with the health thing I'll be making more videos and uh, I'll need a bit more time to do a bit more research I'm sort of starting over it's just like starting over all right guys I hope you're well